This is Pastor David Blunt. I want to thank you for joining our YouTube channel today. If it's a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to like it, turn on the notification, and subscribe button. If you're in the St. Louis area, I want to personally invite you to come out and join us every Sunday at 9 or 11 or our Spanish service at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Never forget, God is for you.
Cause all that I have is hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, got nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, can we declare this all together? So I throw up my head and praise you again. Because all that I have is a hallelujah. Got nothing else fit for you Except for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah All across this place, can you say hallelujah? Come on, say hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah Holy Spirit, you in this place. Come on, let's get loud, church. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you, Holy Spirit. We honor you. Oh, so I draw. Praise you again. Yeah. I want to sing it.
Come on, speak to yourself, Ted. Wake up. Let's pray. In the name of our full name. So come on, my son. Don't you get shy of me. Lift up your son. Cause you got a lion inside of those tongues. Get up and praise the Lord. All right. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy of me. Lift up your soul.
good. You are so amazing. Oh, we praise you, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. There's none like you, oh God. Say with me, great are you, Lord. That was a little pathetic. One more time. Great are you, Lord. And worthy to be praised. One more time. Great are you, Lord. And worthy to be praised. Oh, isn't God good? Isn't he awesome? Isn't he amazing? Oh, hallelujah. Let's just praise him a second. Oh, I thank you, God, for your goodness today. I thank you, God, that today is a day for destinies to be revealed. I thank you, God, that we're going to a new level in you. I thank you, God, that your miracle power is going to be released. I thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles. I thank you that destinies are going to be changed today. Destinies are going to be changed today. Destinies are going to be changed today. I thank you, God, for the anointing that's upon Pastor today as he brings forth the Word of God, changing lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I hope you are ready. You know, your life is going to be changed today. Many, many of you with a message that is going to be shared. You see, there's something happens when you begin to boldly proclaim what the Word of God says, and you begin to stand upon it and say, I trust God, I have faith in God, I believe Him, I believe God, I believe God. Well, Pastor is going to share an amazing word with you today, so make sure you get it. And if you don't get it the first time, listen to it two or three more times. God wants to change your life, and for the things that are coming, you're going to have to know these things. Well, we're going to talk about the ladies' event. We're going to pray for it. Kim's going to come on up. And uh, we're so excited. The ladies' event is going to be happening very, this coming Friday night. You don't want to miss it. You want to make sure you get your tickets. Um, at 4 o'clock... The Love It or Swap It will open up. That's our boutique, ladies. So if you want to come in early for that, that's awesome. But the meeting will begin at 6 o'clock. Everybody say 6 o'clock. A little one more time. 6 o'clock. And uh, then we'll be, we'll be having uh, door prizes. One of the door prizes is a $100 gift certificate, a visa gift certificate. So you want to make sure you come and be a part of that. Also, then we're going to be having uh, Marilyn Hickey will be joining us and also uh, Terry uh, Savelle Foy will be with us and she has an invite right now. Let's just listen to her real quick. Hey, I'm Terry Savelle Foy and I'm a cheerleader of dreams. And I'm so excited about speaking at the Dream Big Ladies event Friday, May 12th. Of course, I'm gonna teach you the power of having a vision and writing it down. So be sure to register, go to cotr.org, get your tickets and I will see you Friday night and let's dream big. Yay, I am so excited. But you know what even excites me more? I'm excited about you ladies being here. But I'm really excited that we're going to get to go fishing. You say, what do you mean fishing? Well, you see, there's different bait for different fish. This is a bait we're to, that you can invite your lost friends and loved ones to come. Say, hey, you want to come to a success conference? And everybody wants to dream big. They come, they hear the gospel, and they accept Jesus as their personal Savior. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. This is an easy invite. for you. It makes it available for you to invite your friends to come. I know I have friends I'm going to be inviting this week because they love success. And so I want to make sure you realize to use this as a fisherman for men and women. <laughs> well, Kim, are you ready to pray? Are you ready to agree? Will you, are you willing to come in agreement with us and be praying this week and fasting? Okay, let's pray. 
Father, we just thank you, God, that you have a vision and dream for teenagers all the way to the senior adults, God. And we call those ladies in from the north, south, east, and west, God, for such a time as this on, on Friday, May 12th, God. We thank you, God, that they have an appointment here, God. We call them in, Lord God. And we thank you, God, that nothing will hold them back. We thank you for babysitters, God. We thank you, Lord God, for perfect weather, God. We thank you for your anointing flowing in this place. We see the altars full in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for destinies like Pastor Kim said that are being fulfilled and um, it's going to be clear their dreams will be clear on Friday God we thank you for God connections Lord and ultimately God may you be glorified and, pr and praised in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Woohoo! Uh, so just a few more things to remind you if you have clothes get them here as quickly as possible for this week also we need volunteers to help set up everything and be praying again we'll turn around and greet each other and say welcome home you may be seated we're going to watch some amazing videos hey online family and metaverse family let's do a meet and greet right now if you're in the online campus turn to someone at your watch party and tell them god is for you then go ahead and jump in the live chat and tell someone there, God is for you. If you're in our metaverse cameras right now, find someone in the room and introduce yourself and tell them God is for you. Let's get to know each other right now and build relationships. We're so excited about all the people we have with us this morning from Benjamin to Michelle to so many others. But right now, we're getting ready to watch some amazing videos about what God is doing here at Church on the Rock and in the lives of other people. So let's sit down and watch them. Welcome to Church on the Rock. My name's Nicole, and I serve in COTR at Español. And my name is Sonora, and I serve on the Creative Arts team. And we are celebrating 40 years of ministry. No matter if you're joining us here in person, live, metaverse, or VR, we are so glad you joined us today. And if you're joining us online, make sure you click that connect link so that we can connect with you. And another way that everyone can connect with us is through social media. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at MyCOTR. And you can watch this week's service again or one of Pastor's recent teachings by going to our watch page. If you want to join our Dream Team volunteers, you can start by taking our Growth Track classes. And you can take these classes in person during our 11 a.m. service or anytime on demand. You can learn about our culture, mission, and values of Church on the Rock. You can sign up for these classes by going to our website. If you would like to give today, we have several easy ways. You can give through a text message on our website by mailing it in, in the giving box on the way out, cryptocurrency, stock, cash app, or Apple Pay. Thank you for your generosity in giving. You are making a difference. We thank you for joining us today, and we are so glad to have you a part of our family. And if you're visiting with us, make sure you stop by the guest center in the lobby because we have a special gift for you. If you are new or newer to Church on the Rock, we have a party for you. May 21st at 1230, Pastor and the team would love to meet you. There will be a catered lunch, fellowship, and a teaching from Pastor. Don't forget the at-home hub in the lobby. We have all new resources. For grieving, Mother's Day, family activities, and resources for difficult teens. Stop by and pick up your 40th anniversary shirts, hats, and mugs available in the lobby for purchase. Once again, thank you for joining us today. And as always, God is for you. August 4th, I had a baby. August 11th, I wasn't feeling well. I wound up in the emergency room. And August 31st, we had open heart surgery. When we got married, I just always knew I wanted us to have a faith-based marriage. And I was raised here at Church on the Rock. And Brad wasn't necessarily raised in church but knew of God and now it's been two years that we've been coming as a married couple. I think she was the driving force to getting us here because she knew that this was a good for our life. For me it was more of an I don't want to call it an experiment but it was the way God kept showing up over and over and over. I, I said I wanted to start tithing even though I knew nothing about it. <laughs> Just listening to pastor, that's good, you know, pastor talking about tithing and let's, let's try it, let's do it. I did it and Behan showed up. <laughs> In every way, shape or form. I mean, you say like surprise 
checks in the mail, yeah. debt canceled. Every single thing we said every Sunday after we chose to start tithing just happened. Like, and we were just like looking at each other like, what is going on? Yeah, this is I'm crazy. talking like the raise happened, the surprise checks in the mail happened, like all of it happened. Like, holy cow, like wham, right in the face. Hello, I'm here right in front of you. Okay, I'm, I'm paying attention now, right? I think that's <laughs> what probably got our attention. And then when we had her a week after having her, I wound up in the ER and come to find out there was a huge mass pressing on 80% of the right side of my heart and it required immediate open heart surgery. And we came to church and that's when really it was just 24 seven praise and worship music, tithing, reaching out to friends to pray for us. And I remember dropping Nash, our five-year-old off at the nursery and just breaking down crying. Like we have a lot going on at home and kind of explaining. And all the workers in his room stopped, placed hands on me prayed for me um, just without a second thought, like just that sense of community, the cards that were showing up, the people that stopped and prayed for us, the people that pulled us aside to pray for us. It was almost overwhelming in, in the sense of community that showed up of just people that we had never even spoke to before that, you know, just showed up for us. I remember praying like the night before surgery, like just please let me make it. Like I just, I don't wanna have cancer. I wanna make it through surgery. I wanna come home to my babies and God just saying like, just trust me. We were told because it was a holiday weekend that we weren't gonna get any results back for two weeks. Within 24 hours, our heart surgeon walked in the room and said, it's benign. No matter what you've ever done, no matter what your story is, there is a space for you here in the presence of God, having a relationship with God, there's no judgment. If you think like you're not worthy enough to have that special relationship with God, but you really, really are. I promise you are. <laughs> Good morning, Church on the Rock. We're so glad you're here today. I want to welcome everybody. If you're here for the very first time, we want to give you some information about our church as well as a gift card to our coffee shop. You say, Pastor, I'm not a coffee person. Well, we have merch in there as well. So if you're a first-time guest, would you raise your hand until an usher comes to you and brings your gift card? Church, let's welcome them, all of our visitors today. Keep your hand up until an usher comes to you. Come on, we can do better than that. We're so glad. We are so glad. Wow. You know, I just got done doing growth track class number one. We have a, a series of classes that help people grow spiritually and discover their gift. And uh, for the last 30 minutes, I was doing that class. And I go around the room and I ask everybody, how did you find Church on the Rock and how long have you been coming? Well, the first lady said, I found Church of the Rock on Google. So I said, Google brought you to God. She goes, yeah. How long have you been coming? My second week. And she's a young person. It was my second week. So we, we went around the room, and from her, then there was a couple in there that I said, how long have you been coming? They said, since 1989. So two weeks, 1989. Isn't it awesome? We're growing in Jesus' name. We're lifelong learners. Well, you know, I want to thank everybody who comes out. We have once a month. It's called Serve Day on a Saturday morning. It's for half a day. It's a great time of fellowship and food, but we ask people to come and just do work around the campus, God's house. And we know if we help God's house, God will help our house. Thank you for taking time to do that. I encourage more of you to come out and do it. You'll see results. God wants us to prosper. Am I right? It's God's will that you prosper and that you be in hell. Well, there's many ways to prosper. I know making more money, and I'm praying that you do that. As we get ready to receive the offering, I pray every day that you would increase in that area, that you would be the head and not the tail in the marketplace, that God would help you make right decisions, okay? But when you make more money, you got to pay more taxes. There's other ways to increase. And that's by saving money, right? Doing things that will save you money. Uh, that's another way to increase just as much as making money. So when you come out and serve the church uh, once a month on serve day, you're saving the church money. In other words, you're helping us prosper as a ministry so we can help more people. 
let's watch some clips of people who came yesterday and served on serve day. We give them all a thank you. We thank you so much. From the bottom of our heart, praise the Lord. So I give you resources, the one-year Bible, the prayer movement, 714, the at-home hub for family, faith, and, and finances. Dave Ramsey, you've got that for all year. You can go there and help you with your finances. But also I give you resources as your pastor to help you start a business, help you thrive in your own business, or just in the marketplace. It's called Marketplace Ministry. It meets once a month on a Saturday at five o'clock in the afternoon, catered meal, childcare, networking. You actually can bring your product and rent a table, promote your business. And we have the best speakers I can find. In two weeks, we have this gentleman called, his name is Jody, and he goes around many corporations. He does work for Disney, other corporations, other people helping them with social media and marketing. I promise you, you'll be blessed if you come. You need to sign up today as soon as you can. Let's watch a clip from Jody. Hello, Jody Mayberry here. I'm the host of the Jody Mayberry Show and creating Disney magic. I'm involved in a lot of podcasts and I'm gonna join you on May 20th to talk about how a podcast can help your business. So I hope you will join me. You may think my business doesn't need a podcast, it doesn't fit, but we'll talk about that. And I think you'll find a podcast can indeed help your business. I look forward to seeing you there. I don't know if you noticed he was at Disney getting on the tram right there when he did that for us. Another resource I give you is a leadership podcast, brand new, only a few weeks old. Uh, and I encourage you to sign up. You say, Pastor, how can we do that? Tommy's gonna to come and share with us how to do that. Tommy? Thank you, Pastor, amen. Here at Church on the Rock, we're lifelong what? Learners. learners, we are lifelong learners. And so as Pastor said, brand new Leadership Lifter podcast. I want everybody to take their phone out. Now, I know you say, wait a minute, you tell us to silence our phone, we're in church, right? Well, don't unsilence it, but take it out real quick. And then this QR code that's on the screen, I want you to go ahead and scan that QR code. Okay, it's gonna take you to our brand new YouTube channel, God is for you experience. Okay, so go ahead and scan it right now, or if you type in that URL, youtube.com slash at God is for you experience. And then when you hit there, on that page, they're going to, they've got a screenshot for me. There's a button right in the middle that says subscribe. I want you to go ahead and hit subscribe. Okay, so that signs you up to make sure that in your feed, you're notified or, or that you're, you can see it, but then tap that subscribe button again, and it's gonna say notifications, okay? See so right here, click subscribed again, and you'll see a button here that says notifications. Go ahead and check all. You say, why is that important? Because as soon as these are released, you're notified. And a brand new one comes out every Monday night at 7 p.m. So make sure you subscribe, you click notify, turn your alerts on, but don't, but don't stop there. As you listen to these, and how many would like to say, you know what, I want to be promoted on my business. I want to be, you know, I want to raise, I want to grow my business, all, all the above, right? These right here is going to help you. And so make sure that you hit the like button, okay? Hit the like button. You say, well, why is that so important? Because not only are you a lifelong learner, but you're a, digi a digital missionary, okay? You are helping others find out about this. You're helping them to lead them to a God who's for them and to help them discover his purpose for their life. Amen? Amen. Say, doing a, hitting a like button? Yes, because if you know anything about YouTube, you know the algorithms, and it helps bump our videos up. It helps it get in front of more people. But don't just hit like. Comment on it. Make sure you post something about what you just watched. But don't stop right there. Say, what, there's more? Yes. Hit the share button. 
So they're going to show you right here another button here that says share. When you tap that, you can text it to someone. I mean, have you ever listened to something you said, man, I know somebody that just asked me about this last night. Has that ever happened to you? That's happened to me. Now you can hit share, you can text it to them, you can Facebook it, you can tweet it, you can, I mean, there's a whole slew. Instagram, just post it everywhere you can. Why? It helps it get in front of more people because we're lifelong learners and we're digital missionaries. Amen? Amen. Praise God, Pastor. Thank you, Tommy. Well, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, let's thank Tommy for sharing that with us. Thank you so much. Now, let me just share with you, the Bible says that the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. Bible says the children of darkness are smarter than the children of the light. What does that mean? Sinners are smarter than saints. What does that mean? Now, it doesn't apply to our church, but I've been a Christian for a long time. It applies to most Christians. Most Christians won't apply successful principles from the Bible. When the world pays money to go to seminars that are actually doing principles that we have in the greatest success book ever written, the B-I-B-L-E. Come on now. So if you're really serious, you know, if you're really serious and you really want to achieve and be a high achiever, I encourage you to subscribe to it. All I can do is give you the resources, but you're going to have to take the action. Our last guest speaker in our marketplace ministry saw that and said, sign me up. I want to be a part of that. The one before that, Michael Francini said, sign me up. I want to be a part of that. These high achievers that are coming across our path are signing up for it. So please, I want to encourage you. I want to help you. This is all about you. It's not about me. I want to help you prosper in the marketplace, and I'm doing all I can right now to do that. Is that all right? I read my one-year Bible today. If you have it, start tomorrow. If you started with me in January and you fell off the wagon, get back on because your spirit won't grow without the Word. Your spirit won't grow without the Word. You can't grow as a Christian without reading your Bible and applying it. So this morning, Old Testament, it's the book of Samuel. A New Testament, it's the book of John uh, about the pool of Bethesda. A and then a proverb, the proverb today was talking about how to control your temper. Boy, do we ever need that right now, right? How to control your temper. But Psalm 105, because there's an Old Testament verse, a New Testament verse, a proverb, and a psalm every day. It's well balanced. And this morning in Psalm, it was Psalm 105. Now listen very carefully, because I'm going somewhere with this. Most Christians don't know this. And you can't claim it if you don't know it. You can't claim it if you don't know it. Psalm 105 was about the exodus when Moses took the children of Israel out of Egypt. Egypt in your Bible is a type of the world system. And when Moses took the children of Israel out of Egypt, it was called the Exodus. Am I right so far? The Bible says in Psalm 105, I read it this morning, that when they went out of the world system, that they took all the gold and the silver with them. Okay? They took all the gold, all the silver with them, and then it said there was not one sick person, not one sick person in God's people when they came out of Egypt. So there they had prospered financially on their way out. They had prospered physically. And then it went on to say God gave them harvest on crops they did not plant. Harvest on crops they did not plant. Pastor, you're losing me. I'm going to sleep. Give me the bottom line. The wealth of the wicked will be turned over into the hands of the righteous. The wealth of the wicked will be turned over into the hands of the righteous. I'm excited about the great wealth transfer. It's Proverbs 13, verse 22, that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just and the righteous. Well, you and I are the just and the righteous. And the Bible says when we get to the end of the age, where I believe we are, there'll be a wealth transfer from the sinner to the saint. Now, for that to happen, we have to position ourselves. We have to position and prepare ourselves. Through the tithe, you are positioning yourself for the great wealth transfer, where the wealth of the wicked will be transferred over into the hands of the righteous. But it won't fall in our lap. 
We've got to be at the right place at the right time using godly wisdom. Amen. So I just want you to claim that. If you don't know it, you can't claim it. But now you know it. So would you claim it? That you're going to be a part of the movement of the great wealth transfer. You ready to worship the Lord with your giving? Here we go. On the screen. Lord, we faithfully and worship, cheerfully worship you with the giving of our tithe and our offering. We believe as we sow seed to establish the vision of your house, you will establish ours. As a result of our giving, we thank you for raises, increases, bonuses, gifts, canceled debt, and surprise checks in the mail. We bless you for blessing our health, giving us a sound mind, quality relationships. Now help us, God, to know you as the God who is for us and to help people discover your purpose for their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much.
exalt the Lord. There is no one like you. Come on, let's sing it. There's no one like you. Let's, let's do what we just sang. Let's exalt him right there where you're at. Make it an altar here and at home. Come on, just express your love and appreciation. Release your faith right now. Let everybody who has breath praise the Lord out loud. Father, we exalt you today. You are Jehovah Jireh, Jesus. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're Jehovah Roy. You're Jehovah Nisi. You're Jehovah Tiskanu. You are the God who is more than enough. You are the beginning and the end. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You're the Lily of the Valley. You're the Rose of Sharon. You're our high tower. You're our refuge. You're our mighty God. We exalt you today. We exalt you today. We exalt you today. We lift you up high. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Manifest yourself in this place, Lord. You're Jehovah Shammah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now here in this place or online, God is restoring someone's hearing. God is healing eyes right now. God is healing someone's shoulder right now in the name of Jesus. There's someone else of a blood disease. God's healing you right now. God's purifying your body, your blood. In the name of Jesus, a hip is being made new right now. 
and restored right now. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. You're restoring marriages. You're restoring relationships. You're giving favor in supernatural places where people need it this week right now, Father. Hallelujah. 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 The loss of feeling in your left arm is coming back right now. Either here or online, the loss of feeling in your left arm is coming back right now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We love you. We lift you up, God. We exalt you today, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, let's give it your best thank you. Amen. Y'all may be seated today. Again, we're so glad you're here. You're at the right place at the right time. That's a good confession, by the way. Every day you need to say that. I'm at the right place at the right time. Amen. Well, I hope you have your Bible, something to take notes with. We're beginning a brand new series today entitled The Authority of the Believer. The Authority of the Believer. Can you say that with me? The Authority of the Believer. One more time. The Authority of the Believer. You know, I received Christ when I was 11 years old. I made Jesus Lord of my life. I got saved, born again, became a Christian at 11. And I'm thankful for my heritage. I grew up in a Pentecostal church, Assemblies of God. My dad was a deacon. My mother was a Sunday school superintendent. We were there every Sunday, every Wednesday. Friday night was CAs, Christ Ambassadors, youth group. Every time the doors were open, we were there. That's my heritage. I grew up with that, okay, all the way to when I, I got out of the house and married Kim, and we went off to Bible school, Bible college. So I thank God for my heritage. I thank God for my church growing up. I thank God for what they taught me. But something happened to me. Everything changed for me when I got a hold of the doctrine I'm going to share with you today. You know, I was taught growing up that whatever happens to you is God's will. Whatever happens to you, good or bad, it's the will of God, and you can't do anything about it, so just suffer and go through it. I couldn't wrap my mind around that. I couldn't wrap my head around that. Really, I just couldn't. I couldn't see a God like that that would put bad things on me because the Bible says the devil does that, that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but God comes to give you life and life more abundantly. Good God, bad devil. And so I couldn't wrap my head around that whatever happens to me is God's will because living that way is just living. I didn't want to just live. I wanted to overcome. You know, are you living today, existing today, or are you overcoming today? Without this doctrine I'm going to share with you today, you won't be an overcomer. You need this doctrine. Doctrine means teaching. You need this teaching to be an overcomer. People who think that everything happens to them is the will of God, they live as a victim. But people who understand the doctrine of the authority of the believer, they live as a victor. They live as an overcomer. In fact, let's just say it, I am an overcomer. Okay, so, but I can't really be an overcomer without having a revelation of the authority of the believer. You see, God gave you and me the power of choice. I can choose evil or I can choose good. I can choose God or the devil. I, I can choose heaven or hell. God doesn't force us. I go all the way back to our great, 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 great grandparents in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve. God gave them the power of choice. God didn't force it. God didn't make it. Their circumstances or consequences were a result of their decisions. Their consequences, their circumstances was a result of their decision, Adam and Eve. So I, I couldn't wrap my head around, Dave, just keep your mouth shut, be a good little boy. Whatever happens to you is God's will. Accept it and suffer through it. I couldn't do that. 
I wouldn't serve a God like that because I deeply believe that God was a good God and God wanted to do good things in my life. And the devil's a bad devil and he wants to do bad things in my life. So when I heard this, when I heard this doctrine, it absolutely transformed the way I lived as a Christian. It transformed my life. And we're not going there, but it's Matthew 16. We'll look at it in a couple of weeks. Matthew 16, 18 and 19. And it says this, whatever you bind will be bound. Whatever you loose will be loose. So notice the emphasis on you, not God. You, me, not God, not the Trinity. So whatever you bind will be bound, and whatever you loose will be loosed. It's called the prayer of binding and loosing. Pastor, I'm new to all of this. I don't get it. What does that mean? The word bind means stop. The word loose means allow. So in other words, whatever you stop will be stopped. And whatever you release or allow in your life will be allowed or released in your life. Am I helping somebody today? Whatever you bind will be bound. Whatever you loose will be loosed. The prayer of binding and loosing. To bind means you stop it. To loose means you allow it. So our circumstances and our consequences are a result of our good or bad decisions. Two weeks ago, I was here sharing with you how I had my own personal research department, Siri. Do I remember that? And I asked Siri, how many people are mad at God in America? And Siri answered me, 60%. 60% of Americans are angry at God. They're blaming God for their consequences. They're blaming God for their circumstances. They need this doctrine I'm sharing with you today on the authority of the believer. God did not ordain you and me to be losers, whiners, or complainers. He did not ordain us to get whipped in life he created us to win in life and overcome and be victors. Can I have an amen? So let's begin our journey today, and let's go to Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Now, this is after the death, burial, resurrection, and this is the ascension. Last words are always famous. Here are Jesus' last words to his followers before his ascension to heaven. Look what he says. Jesus came and he spoke to them saying, all, what's the next word? Authority. Again? Authority. One more time? Authority. Okay. All authority. We're talking about the authority of the believer. He's talking to believers. Okay. And he said, all authority has been given to me, capital M, Jesus, in heaven. And this is important on earth. You and I aren't in heaven yet. We're on earth. So it applies to us. Verse 19, go therefore, great commission, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Verse 20, teaching them. So we need teaching. We don't just need shouting. We don't just need preaching. Preaching, preaching is for sinners. Teaching is for saints. We need both. Preaching is for sinners. Teaching is for saints. We need both. Teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I will be with you. Isn't it good to know we're never alone? I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen. Bottom line, death, burial, resurrection, ascension. Famous last words. He tells his followers he has regained the authority Adam lost in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, the first Adam, God said, I give you dominion, 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 and authority over everything on the earth. Adam lost that when he sinned. The Bible says in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15, 
Jesus is the second Adam. So through Jesus, he got back what Adam lost. He got back the authority and the dominion. And then what he says is, I have it. I give it to my followers. Because my followers will need the authority I give them to fulfill the Great Commission. They will need this authority to be bold witnesses. They'll need this authority to live the Christian life as an overcomer, a victor, and not a victim. Without this doctrine, without this teaching, without this revelation of the authority of the believer, we can't fulfill and live the life God called us to live. It changed my life totally, okay? So next, let's go to the next slide, guys. What Jesus had authority over, you have authority over. If he had authority and he said he gave it to us, so doesn't it make sense what he had authority over, he gave to us, so we have authority over it as well. Can I have an oh me or an amen? amen. Y'all with me, church? Yes. We're a learning church now. We're a teaching church. So the authority he had, he gave to us as followers. So that means his authority has been given to us. What he had authority over, we have authority over as well. Now, religion wants to put all the responsibility on God and take it off of man. Religion wants to put all the responsibility on God and take it off of man. It's a myth to say God is in control. God is not in control. If God was in control, there'd be no abortions. There'd be no incest. There'd be no drunkenness. There'd be no sexual perversion. There'd be no wars. If God was in control, there'd be no racism, bigotry. If God was in control. If God was in control, he'd make you tithe. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right. So let's go to the next slide. Jesus had authority over demons. Jesus had authority over demons. If you know your Bible, it says in the last days, more demonic activity will take place than ever before. I know you're like me. I am seeing more demonic activity than I've ever seen in my lifetime or ministry, okay? But the good news is Jesus was given authority over demons. As Christians, one of our ministry is the casting out of devils. Are you with me? Mark 16, verse 15 through 20. It lists our job description at the very beginning is casting out devils. There is going to be more demonic activity in the days to come than you have ever seen. And my job is to arm you and prepare you for it, okay? You ever gone into some place and people just treated you terribly and they just abused you and misused you and did crazy things? It wasn't them, it was the spirit behind them. And it was the presence of God on you that rattled that demonic activity. Okay, so let's look at the scripture now. All of these are found. I want to give you five things Jesus had authority over. If he had authority over it as a Christian, you have authority over it. This is not a formula. It won't work as a formula. I'm going to, I'm going to try that Monday. It won't work. It doesn't work through formula. It only works through faith. Okay? So all five are in Mark, the Gospel of Mark, easy to study. Now, they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having what? Authority. There you see the word. They, they were astonished. It was different. There was an anointing. There was an authority, not as the scribes. Verse 23. Now, there was a man in the synagogue in church with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Notice that demon, that Jesus and his presence being in the synagogue activated demonic activity. Weird stuff. You and I have both been places where we thought, how come they were so weird? They were so belligerent. They were so, uh, they didn't, they were so crazy. 
that normally, if it's out of the normal, it's because demonic activity behind that person. And the presence of God on you stirred it up like the presence of God on Jesus stirred it up in church. Now, there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit. Say unclean spirit. In the Bible, in the law of interpretation, unclean spirit always dealt with sexual perversion. Sexual perversion. I just want to ask you a question. Are we seeing sexual perversion now like never before? We don't know if we're a boy or a girl or what we are or what we should be. I've never thought in my lifetime I would see sexual perversion like that. So notice unclean spirits in the Bible always deal to sexual perversion. And notice this demonic activity. Notice the demon cried out. Jesus had authority over demons. Verse 24. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Notice that that demon spirit knew who Jesus was and who he was identified with, the God of Israel. Identification has a whole lot to do with the authority of the believer. You have to know who you are in Christ, right? All right, so verse 25. But Jesus rebuked him. Say it with me, the power of a rebuke. Say it again, the power of a rebuke. You and I have the same authority that Jesus had. He gave it to us as followers. What he had authority over, you have authority over. So don't allow demonic activity in your life or in your home. You need to stand up and rebuke it. The lies, the accusation, the things that he's saying to you and whispering to you, that demonic activity, you don't live with it, you don't exist with it, you don't put up with it, you don't tolerate it, you rebuke it. What you bind is bound, what you loose is loose, what you tell to stop has to stop. What you say is to be released has to be released. The power of a rebuke. So we don't put up, we're not afraid of demons, we're not afraid of fallen angels, we're not afraid of evil spirits, and we don't put up with their tactics, lies, and methods. We take our authority and rebuke them. And Jesus spoke to the demon and said, shut up. I put that in there. And come out of him. Next verse. And when the unclean spirit had conversed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Power over demons. Authority over demon activity. When there's unusual things going on in your life from every direction, financial, physical, family, you can always trace it back to increased demonic activity against you. And you need to rise up with the doctrine of authority of the believer, take the authority Jesus had and gave to us and activate that. All right? Next verse. They were all amazed, so they questioned among themselves, what is this? What new doctrine? What new doctrine? And for a lot of you, this is new doctrine. You've never heard this before. The authority of the believer. What is the doctrine? For with authority. What is the doctrine? For with authority. Do y'all see that family? You see the scripture. What is this doctrine? New or with authority? I grew up in the church. My parents were awesome. They weren't perfect, but they were awesome. The church was awesome, but it didn't know this new doctrine. They taught me whatever happens to you is God's will. Put up with it. Deal with it. Someday you'll get to heaven. I couldn't wrap my brain around that nor would I serve a God who did that. For with authority, he commands even unclean spirits, which always deal with sexual perversion, and they have to obey him. Next. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. Let's go to number two. Next slide. Sickness. 
Jesus had authority over sickness and diseases. He had authority over sickness and diseases. Really, Pastor? The Bible says that he took our infirmities on the cross. He took our sickness and our diseases on the cross so we could receive healing. Am I right? The great exchange, right? We're redeemed from sickness. Now, we all deal with it. We all have to go through it. But the key is we have authority, authority to use against it, all right? So scripture for this, Mark chapter 1. They are all in the book of Mark. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were what? Sick. And those who were demon-possessed. Now, just because we get sick, we're not demon-possessed. This was just talking about the whole crowd that was there. Verse 33. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. Next verse. Then he healed many who were sick. He had authority over sickness. In Mark 16, you're to cast out devils and you're to lay hands. Help me finish it. You're to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Wow. Then he healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases. I am thankful for every doctor in our community, our church. We have several. All the nurses, all the pharmaceutical people, we need you. Thank God for you. But there are times when you come to us and say, we don't have an answer. It's incurable. At that time, whose report am I going to believe? You don't have to live with it the rest of your life just because man doesn't have an answer. You have authority over all kinds of diseases. He cast out many demons. He did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Next. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Next slide. Number three. So number one, we have authority over demons. Number two, we have authority over sickness. And you can take this and study this for yourself. Number three, we have authority over bad weather. Remember what he had authority over? You've been given that authority. And now we have that authority. Without this doctrine of the authority of the believer, you're going to live as a whipped up, beat up Christian. Unhappy and miserable, all your Christian experience. Waiting for heaven for victory. That is not God's will for you and me. He had authority over bad weather. Mark, next slide, chapter 4, verse 35. On the same day when the evening had come, he said to them, to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. Verse 36. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and the other little boats were also with him. Next verse. And a great storm arose, a mega storm, it says in the Greek language, huge a great mega storm arose, and the waves beat against the boat so that it was filling up with water. Verse 38. But he was in the stern asleep on the pillow. I want you to notice something. I want to extract something, a lesson. Jesus was asleep in the storm. Jesus was asleep in the storm. We extract from that people shouldn't even know when we're going through a storm by our outward behavior. He was asleep in the storm. He had the peace of God. He wasn't troubled, fearful, anxious, insomnia, worried. He was asleep in the storm while the disciples were fearful, anxious, fretting, watching the news. He was asleep in the storm, but look at this. He was asleep on a pillow, and they had to wake him up, and they said to him, notice, here's the key on how to be asleep in the storm. In other words, sleeping in the storm doesn't mean you're oblivious to it. It means that you know you have the greater one on the inside, and the peace of God will be your guide, and it will all work out for your good, and this too shall pass. 
Everyone say asleep. Oh, everyone say asleep. asleep. Everybody who is asleep, say asleep, asleep. In, the storm. in the storm. You need to learn that because people shouldn't even know when you're going through trouble that you're going through trouble. Pastor, you mean we can't share? Oh, yeah, we should share, but once we have shared and once we've given it to God, then people shouldn't even know what we're going through until we've gone through it on the other side. It's a testimony to God. Now, the key was that he had his head on a pillow. He had his head on a pillow. Pastor, what kind of pillow was it? A feathers, a foam, a, what kind of was it? It was the word. The pillow represents the promises of God. The pillow represents the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ's mind. Okay? Standing on the, his pillow represents promises of God. Where was his head? On the promises of God. His head wasn't wrapped around the circumstances or the storm or the trouble or the problem or the difficulty or the adversity. His head was wrapped around the Word of God. His brain, his mind was being renewed in the one-year Bible daily, and it caused him to be asleep in the storm. There is a storm we are in and a greater storm coming, but you and I can sleep in the storm, not be worried about our future, not be fretting, anxious, upset, or insomnia. Come on, let's don't patty cake. Let's give the Lord. So look, they're blaming God. They're blaming God. They said, teacher, don't you care? They're putting the responsibility on him instead of taking it on themselves. Don't you care that we're perishing? Verse 39. Then he arose, and what did Jesus do? He rebuked the wind and the storm. Say it with me, the power, the power. of a rebuke. It can change your circumstances. It can change the, the trajectory of your life. It can change the trajectory of your family, of your marriage, of your children, of your children's children. The power of a rebuke can say, no longer, devil, you can't have my children, my grandchildren. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my baby. You can't have my health. You can't have my mind. You're not going to mess with my feelings. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. Notice, for a great storm, there was a great calm. How did it change? The authority of the believer, the power of a rebuke. You know, in the Bible, we'll look at it in a couple of weeks. In James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, resist the devil. That's part of the authority of the believer, resistance. It says, you are to resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Am I right, everybody? Yes. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Look up the word resist in the Greek if you want to. It's perpetual. You resist perpetual. You never stop. It's not on Sunday only, twice a week, once a day. It's perpetual. It's continual. You never stop resisting the devil. You don't say it once and you think you got it. It's to be a lifestyle, a lifestyle of resistance, a lifestyle of using your God given authority. It's not once in a while, try to work it. It won't work through a formula. It won't work for you. You've got to have faith in what I'm saying today. You've got to believe in what I'm saying today, or it won't work no way for you. So you have faith in it. It's not a formula. And from a great storm to a great calm, the power of a rebuke. And you've got to resist the devil. You've got to say, I rebuke you perpetually, continually. You never stop. It never stops. It will increase, I promise you, as the end of the age and craziness out there in the world increases, you're going to need to know the doctrine of the authority of the believer. Amen? Gene, you have told me down through the years so many times how you were saved and protected when you used the name of Jesus, when you used the authority that God gave you, how God protected him, watched over him, and kept him from harm. It works, doesn't it, Gene? He arose, rebuked the You can do something about your situation. He rebuked the storm and said, peace be still, and the wind ceased, 
and there was a great calm. I'm going to get happy in just a moment here. Next slide, next slide. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? They put the responsibility on Jesus. Jesus put it back on them. Religion wants to put all the responsibility on God and take it away from man. In other words, blaming God for my consequences and my circumstances. We're not going to live that way, folks, and have victory. We're not going to live that way and be an overcomer. Next slide. And they feared exceedingly, and they said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea? Do you speak the things? I sure do. Jesus spoke to a tree. Jesus said, spoke to a mountain. Here Jesus speaks to the wind. Here Jesus speaks to the sea. Pastor, are we supposed to go around speaking to nature? Yeah, I think so. But we learn from this something greater than that. You are supposed to speak to natural things. You are supposed to speak to your circumstances. And that's what will change your circumstances. If you resist and rebuke the devil perpetually, continually, you never stop. Okay, next slide. Number four is sin. We have five. Five things that he was had authority over, you have authority over, and they're all found in the book of Mark. He had authority over sin and destructive habits. Next slide, guys. Mark 2, verse 1. Sure do love y'all. Six of you. Boy, that's kind of weak. I better pray for you to love me. Amen. Sure do love you all. How, I don't even know you, Pastor. I've been coming two weeks. Well, you know I love you if I feed you. Look at the preparation of this sermon. Look at the preparation of our service. Look at all that we've done for you and your family. That's proof that we love you. It's not happenstance. We work all week. Okay? I want to arm you. I want you to walk in victory. I want you to be an overcomer. I want you to enjoy your life and not endure. I want you to live as an overcomer. Okay. And again, he entered to Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. How many know he's in this house today? He's in the house. Verse 2, immediately many gathered. How many know he wants many in this house to gather and not stay at home? He wants many to gather in his house so that there's no longer any room. you got to take the curtains down. you got to add a Saturday night service. you got to go back to a Wednesday night service because there's no room to receive them all. Do you get the analogy here? It's God's will for the church to be full, his house to be full, for it to be no room. You keep adding services. That's the will of God, not to stay home, not to be indifferent, not to backslide, not to miss the rapture. Immediately, many gathered together in that house, so there was no longer any room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. What should happen? The word should be preached and taught. Next verse. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. Next verse. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof. And when they had broken through, they let down the bed on the paralytic was lying on. Next verse. Jesus saw their faith. Do your children see you, mom and dad? Do they see faith or fear? Worry or worship? Regret or reverence? You can see faith if you have faith. Faith comes out in our behavior, our attitude, our response, our reaction, our expectation. Faith comes out in our words. Jesus said, if somebody has faith, you can see their faith in their outward behavior. He said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven you. Jesus had authority over sin and sinful habits. I'm here to tell you, you can break that habit. You can break that habit. No matter what the world has told you, you can break that damnable, destructive habit. You can break it, you can, you can curse it, and you can, you can cause it to stop. You can bind it with the authority, and you can release the virtue of Christ in its place in your life. 
Come on, let's can one more time. Let's don't patty cake. Let's sing out for victory over sin and sinful habits. Verse six, verse six, one number five. This is the last one. Lack. He had authority over lack. Now there are more than these five, but I gave you these five, and they're all in the book of Mark, so you can study them for yourself. He had authority over lack. God's will is not for you and I to rob from Peter to pay Paul. God's will is not for you and I to live off the government. God's will is not for you and I to just barely get by on beggar avenue. God's will is not for you and I to worry about our finances. He had authority over lack, so that means you have authority over lack. Let's look at the scripture, Mark chapter 6. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, we're in a desert, it's late, verse 36. Send the people away. Let them go to town, McDonald's, Hardee's, Burger King, and get something to eat. Verse 37. But he answered and said to them, you give them something to eat. Notice, they want to put it on him. He puts it back on them, right? And he said, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 denaro worth of bread? and give them something to eat, verse 38. But he said to them, how many loaves do you have? What do you have? What do you have in your house? There's a miracle in your house. You have a seed that will meet your need. You have a seed that will meet your need. Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. Next verse, verse 39. Then he commanded them to all sit down in groups of green grass, now, I know, I know we're, we're running over a little bit, but folks, don't be in a hurry to get out of church. Okay? You can't have revival if you're in a hurry and time conscious. I know time is important, but we want a revival in our church. Okay? And you know, I'm very considerate of your time. I'm very considerate. But if you want to move a God, it takes time. Okay? So watch this now. We learn from this. No multiplication without organization. I want God to multiply me. What's your garage look like? What's your basement look like? What's your drawers look like? What's your house look like? What does your car look like? Now, we laugh at this, but until they got in groups of 50, no multiplication. Until they got organized, no multiplication. God won't give me more if I'm not faithful and organized with what I have. Okay? If I want multiplication, it's going to take organization, and I gave you Dave Ramsey app at $140 a person, okay? To get organized, have a budget, get things in order, then watch for multiplication. Verse 40, as the team comes out, they sat down in hundreds, and they sat down in fifties. Next verse, and when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, watch this now. This is worth going over five minutes. Watch this. He took what they had, and he looked up to heaven. Everyone say looked. In the Greek, it's the word imagination. Imagination. One of the ways you're going to use your God-given authority is use your imagination. Jesus saw into another realm God's provision. He imagined plenty instead of lack. He imagined plenty instead of lack. Use your divine imagination as the authority of a believer. He looked up. He took what he had, and he imagined what God could do with it. And he blessed it, and he broke the loaves, and he gave it to the disciples to sit down, and they divided among them all. Next verse. So they all ate, and they were filled. Say it with me. I have authority over lack. Authority over lack. Okay, am I living or am I overcoming? Authority, Christians don't know this. 80% of Christians don't know what I'm telling you right now. 80%, okay? What makes up authority? Three things. Number one, redemption. The components, like the mixture in a cake, this is the components of authority. Pastor, I want to know, how do I walk in this authority? What's it made up of? Redemption. You got to know what Jesus has done for you. You've got to know what Jesus has done for you. He redeemed you from the curse of the law. 
He redeemed you from sickness, poverty, and spiritual death. Redemption. Number two, righteousness. You got to know who you are in Christ. You have to know your identity. He had authority. He gave it to you. You got to know your right standing. You have to know what he's done for you. You can't claim what you don't know. You have to know who you are in him. You can't claim what you don't know. And number three, resistance. These are the three R's of God-given authority. You're going to have to learn how to resist and rebuke the devil, lack, sickness, bad weather, habits. You're going to have to learn how to resist that perpetually every day of your life. You never stop walking in God-given authority if you want to walk in total victory. I'm done. Did you get something today from the Word? Come on, let's thank God for the Word. Say it with me. I'm a victor and not a victim. I will exercise my God-given authority and walk as an overcomer. One more time, I love you. As our host comes, give God praise. This is Pastor David Blatt. I want to thank you for joining our YouTube channel today. If it's a blessing to you, I want to encourage you to like it, turn on the notification, and subscribe button. If you're in the St. Louis area, I want to personally invite you to come out and join us every Sunday at 9 or 11 or our Spanish service at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Never forget, God is for you.